So what's the first thing you do from, if you're trying to draw this hallway? Find your horizon line. Yes, always. Same thing as landscape, okay? Find the horizon line. So uh, your, your major compositional decision is if you want to draw the ceiling, you put the horizon low. If you want to draw the floor, you put it high, right? Make sense? So I'll put it just above center. And you should always have just a sense of where that is, right? Then you have to decide uh, where your eye is in relation. So wherever you put the vanishing point, you're going to have, uh, so like if I put the vanishing point here, I'm mostly going to be drawing the right wall. If I put it here, I'm mostly going to be drawing the left wall. It's like point of the camera, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And you can, you can use your, your phone camera as a viewfinder. It's going to help you out. Um, so I'll put it here, right? Some people put a point. I like to put a little cross. I find that that's much more accurate. Um, if you have, if you're having like a lot of trouble, one of the most important things is just to be honest that everything is connecting to the vanishing point and going away from it. If you can't be honest about that, then you're gonna have a rough time. So, identifying the the first thing you do is you find like that wall, right? So I'm gonna find that wall here where that where the double doors are. So I need to pretend like I can rip out my eyeballs and throw them perfectly and wherever they would splatter on the door is where that vanishing point would be within the door, right? So I'm not going to take my vanishing point and put it right in the center of the door because I'm not standing in the center of the door, right? I'm six feet up somewhere towards just off the to the right of center of the left door. So. I need to take a quick guess about where that is, right? I'm about like there in the double door, right? And then the wall is around it. And the wall actually continues, but it's but it's cut off by the uh, the wall here. And then the ground's here. Again, cut off. This side is slightly shorter than that side. Just the way the, the wall is framed, right? So this is the most important thing because this gives me four identifiable corners to work off of. Right? So now all I have to do is connect the dots and I immediately create space, right? So I go from here to here. I can, you know, put the pencil out like that and then draw a line. Oops. Then I go from here to here. Continue that out. From here to here. From here to here. You may have a tendency to let those lines drift, but just be honest about where they are. If you're having trouble, the, the easiest way to, to do this is to always pull. So you can lay your drawing out flat and just pull the lines to you. Um, so this really quickly sets up a sense of depth, right? But actually what I have to do uh, is, so this is actually going to be the rectangle that the door is in front of, so I have to shrink the door a little bit. You'll see why. Because there's a little hallway space back here. So I have to kick this back slightly. And then my double door will get shortened a little bit. which is fine. 
Okay. So now if I want to include like the next double doors and that bridge out there, I can do that. It's not too bad. Still the same vanishing point, right? Same horizon line. I'm just going to have a double door that fits back there. Right? And the bridge is going to go out from about here. Because it's going to not meet up with this line, right? Same thing over here. Bridge is going to start from like here. The rails on the bridge going back. And so on, right? Does that make sense? So, because everything is physically parallel, except for the verticals and, and the horizontals, everything just goes back to the vanishing point, right? So everything that parallels my line of sight, my imaginary line of sight, is going to recede. Then I have two sets of lines that don't, right? Verticals and horizontals that are perpendicular, like parallel to my shoulder, right? Does that make sense? So all you have to do is ask yourself, does this line that I see parallel my line of sight? Is it vertical or does it parallel my shoulders? Okay. And answering those questions gives you whether it receives to the vanishing point or not. Okay. Then you can go on and, uh, you know, mark for the, uh, the ceiling, right? So I know that it intersects here, here, there's one in the center, but directly between those, and then measure that out. So I should have five lines. That's accurate to what's there. So now all I have to do is carry those out. And I create a ceiling tile grid, or the beginnings of it, right? So what I can do is I can measure, say, at one door, like one half of the double door, and then that's this window, if I measure the window, is slightly less than that. So I can take um, I can take slightly less than that, make a mark here, and I know that my windows over here have to work within that space, right? Then I can take this intersection and pull it over horizontally. And I could go out there and I could actually count the number of ceiling tiles. That would be, you know, probably annoying to do. And you don't have to do that, but you can't, right? If you want to get it accurate. And then I notice whatever intersects that line. There's like an opening here. that pretty much directly intersects with that ceiling tile line. So anything I find over on the right, I can pull over and find it on the left side. Powerful kind of tool. You know. And then I can put in all the little details, right? And so on. And then if I want to knock out actual dimension to these, I can add that also, right? Right? Just by adding more and more details. You can do this like as much as as much as you want. Generally what I'll do for a ceiling tile grid is just start subdividing and make sure that these spaces get smaller and smaller as they go back and bigger and bigger as they come forward, right? Creating that sense of depth, right? And what, I don't necessarily care so much about accuracy in this early stage. You can get, you can build on this, right? What you want is just like a loose approximation. And then if you have things like um, uh, 
decorations or whatever. Remember that they go to the vanishing point as well. start to build it up, right? And then you have yeah, you might have a door. You draw the door frame in just by insetting it slightly. Okay. So as many details as you want, you can go you can go very small with this. Um, if you have a lot of trouble just getting these major planes, right? The ground, the ceiling, and the walls together. That can itself that can be a challenge in and of itself. And then, you know, you have the tile here, right? So every tile line is gonna go back to this vanishing point. And so on. Yeah, yeah, I start with this, I would start with this rectangular square, like the first identifiable one that you see. And you can do this outside, you can do this inside, it doesn't matter. Hallways are always fun for one point. But you can just go out and sight this height right here against this width right here. Or the height of the doors versus the width of the doors and so on. 